This is the same couch and background I had for my Turkish Spider-Man video. Well, guess that means I'm doing another Turkish movie. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again to dive into the weird, wonderful world of low-budget Turkish knockoff cinema. This time around, I got a little movie for you by the name of Three Supermen and Mad Girl. Or Three Supermen and a Mad Girl. Or Mad Girl and Three Supermen. Or Bay of Blood. But hey, here's a switch. None of these titles has the word Turkish in them, which means that this movie isn't a ripoff of a popular American superhero. Instead, it's a ripoff of an Italian series called The Three Fantastic Supermen. I don't really know much about The Three Fantastic Supermen, other than they've been to Tokyo and the Olympics. Yes. Oh, and here's an interesting little tidbit. Apparently, the Olympics movie actually incorporated footage from this movie. Now, I don't know if this is the only time a movie series has ever used footage from a ripoff of itself, but yeah, I'm gonna say that's probably the only time that's ever happened. Well, there may not be much information on this one, but I think that if I can withstand the Turkish take on superheroes like Spider-Man and Superman, I'm pretty sure I can take Turkified versions of superheroes I've never even heard of. So let's dive into Three Supermen and Mad Girl. So the movie begins with the Turkish KKK meeting? Either that or the Turkish knockoff of Ninja Turtles is even cheaper looking than I thought it would be. Oh wait, never mind. It turns out they all work for Satan. You know, I was wondering how all these Turkish movies were able to get away with using copyrighted characters. Also, as you may have guessed by now, there's no subtitles again. But hey, just because the movie doesn't have subtitles doesn't mean I can't add my own. Hmm, now I'm assuming this is supposed to be Mad Girl, or maybe Turkish Vampirella? Uh, fellas, I think you put the robot's penis a little too high up on him there, you might want to lower it a bit. You know, I have a feeling that even if this movie did have subtitles, I still wouldn't know what's going on. The movie cuts to this woman waking up as if she'd just been knocked out, even though we don't see it. Then it cuts to this woman getting choked all over the course of about 30 seconds. Calm down, movie. I know you've only got 65 minutes to tell your story, but some establishing shots never hurt anybody. Gah, I didn't mean an establishing shot of this guy's taint. Jesus. Oh, and nice music here, too. <laughs> Thunderball, huh? Yeah, play all the Tom Jones you want, buddy. These girls still aren't gonna throw their panties at ya. So anyway, this is one of the three Supermen. A superhero with the power to make his hair the only visible thing on screen. Oh, and from what I gather, they get their powers from their suits. Hey, that's handy. The suits make you impervious to bullets just so long as they're not fired directly at you. Well, you made sure the suits work. Now it's time to... spy on women taking their clothes off? Well, I gotta give these Turkish movies this. You wouldn't see superheroes in an American movie do something like this. Hmm. Well, that was a productive day of peeping on women. Anyways, to the Superman mobile! I mean my dad's first car from high school. Also, judging by the way these three are dressed, I'm not sure if they're gonna drive this thing or try and sell it to somebody. Oh, never mind. They're gonna use it to try and pick up chicks. Time to watch this guy work his magic. Here's another advantage to being a superhero. If you end up getting cock-blocked by some goons, you can just suit up and kick the crap out of them. Hey idiots, try shooting him in the chin. Oh, and if kicking the crap out of a bunch of guys doesn't impress a girl enough to go along with you, apparently you can just force her to. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. I hear he fights for truth, justice, and the right to smack a bitch upside the head. Three supermen thrill as they randomly abuse women. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? I was gonna shoot her after I roughed her up a little. 
Time to make sure this guy gets brought to justice. Or just kill him, I guess that works too. Oh boy, Turkish Assassin's Creed is really damn awkward. Also, isn't this movie called Three Supermen and Mad Girl? Where the hell are the other two? Oh wait, never mind. They're just busy watching the other guy do all the fighting. You know, I've always wondered with these films. Did they actually get any permits to film where they did? Or did some guy just come home from work one day only to find a bunch of random guys in costumes play fighting on his roof? Well, I guess if anyone complained, they could just say that they were making fun of his roof and that it fell under fair use. Another good thing about fair use, it lets you use a really rockin' soundtrack. Isn't that right, Santana? Now just make sure you don't use any John Williams or else YouTube will mute the soundtrack. Yeah, that's right, I'm still pissed about that. You know, I'm not really sure what the bad guy's plan is. Although that could be because the movie won't let me see what the hell it is they're doing. Fortunately, not only did the Supermen know exactly where they are, but they even had the foresight to set up some trampolines. Uh-oh, this looks like it just turned into Turkish death proof. And something tells me these guys didn't hire Turkish Zoe Bell. Oh, thanks, movie. I was wondering if this guy's ass crack was bulletproof, too. Now I know. So anyway, one of the Supermen gets captured, mostly through his own damn fault, and he gets interrogated by Mad Girl. <laughs> See? Not too fun when it happens to you, is it? Oh, man. So many fight scenes. I didn't think it was possible to top Turkish Spider-Man in the gratuitous fight scene department, but I think this movie might end up doing it. Look, even the movie thinks this is all a little bit much. Um, sorry, I stopped paying attention for a second there. Uh, what's going on? Okay, let's see. So they're rescuing Turkish Lindsay Lohan from Turkish Herbie Fully Loaded, and now they're retiring to the living room. Okay, got it. So the three supermen regroup and... Hey, wait a minute, I know those puppets. Okay, well I guess now I know who was watching during that scene. Uh, Mr. Cameraman, you might want to turn down the exposure a little bit. Kinda looks like these two are talking to the Invisible Man right now. Meanwhile, we see the bad guys at their base where they're busy preparing to- Oh Jesus, a fight scene! Okay, well, if the movie wasn't interested in showing that scene, who am I to argue? Besides, we don't need any more gratuitous fight scenes. What we need is some more gratuitous nudity. And check out the soundtrack. Hey, Echoes by Pink Floyd. That means that this strip scene should go on for about 23 and a half minutes. I'm just joking. She actually gets captured. Man, so much Pink Floyd in the soundtrack. I wonder if this movie syncs up with Turkish Wizard of Oz. And hey, here's a switch. The bad guys are actually using a legitimate form of torture this time. Hey, only the heroes get to do that. Okay, fellas, it's time to rescue the girl, but first, the whores! You know, I gotta admit, I really wasn't expecting this movie to turn into Turkish Eyes Wide Shut. I hear the director was such a perfectionist that sometimes they actually had to do a second take. Oh, and in an amazing plot twist, it turns out Mad Girl is really... whoever this is. I think it might have been this girl from earlier? I don't know, I'm sure this would be shocking if I had any idea of what the hell was going on. Well, it's been about two minutes without a fight scene. Better fix that. <laughs> Good lord, this movie is only 65 minutes long and I think about 60 of that is people air punching each other. Look, even one of the supermen thinks enough is enough and is trying to skip ahead and find out where the plot is. Joke's on him though, that just leads to another fight scene. Uh... 
Gotcha! I'd be scared if I were you too. You do not want to know what the robot is going to do with that thing. Ooh, let me guess. That usually doesn't happen to you, right? Oh shit, it turns out Satan is really Madonna's character from Turkish Dick Tracy. Or this guy, I guess. I don't know, there's no subtitles. What do you want from me? Well, the bad guy may have gotten away, but at least they managed to rescue the girl. <laughs> oh, okay. So apparently it's alright for the Superman to spy on random girls taking their clothes off, but God forbid they see this girl's tits. <laughs> Good news, robot. They made a testicle to go with your robo-penis. Looks like the robot's a little upset that this guy only made one, though. <laughs> mm, pretty harsh, but that guy did cross the line when he called him Lance Armstrong, bot. And regarding the ending to this movie, I'm not really sure what to say. The bad guys are looking at the robot, the supermen come in, and then they just get arrested. Great, so the one place where a climactic fight scene would actually be appropriate, and they don't have one. Go figure. Oh well, at least the movie doesn't call itself a cunt like at the end of Turkish Superman. So, how does this movie compare to the Italian three Superman movies? Even though it may not have the word Turkish in the title, this movie still has all the right elements of a Turkish knockoff film. Plenty of fight scenes, some gratuitous nudity, and it proves that questionable depictions of superheroes aren't limited to just American ones. So who knows, maybe this means that somewhere, somehow, there really is a Turkish Ultraman. We can only hope. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Where the hell am I right now? Thank <laughs> you.